Hello. I'm often asked by people what kind of kit should you carry in your white CA uh, to help implement rescues and pull systems to get a big craft out of the river, such as rafts and canoes and sometimes kayaks. So you can buy a lot of specialist rescue kit out there on the market, but I have to say some of the, the homemade stuff uh, that's been considered can be as good, if not better, possibly a little bit more versatile. So the piece of kit, one of the pieces of kit I carry in my buoyancy aid is this. It's uh, about five and a half to six mil Dyneema breaking strain cord. And I've tied it in a particular way because then I can use it in a particular set of uh, techniques that make life quite quick, quite effective and quite easy. So I thought I'd show you a few things about what you can do with it, how useful it is and then how to tie it. So this is uh, five and a half, maybe six millimeter Dyneema or Kevlar string. Uh, on the outside is nylon sheath. You need to have the, the nylon sheath on the outside to make it uh, grip and bite each other really well. Um, and I've got about five and a half, six meters of this and I've chained it into a nice little chain and then I've pre-tied uh, a long loop on it and then I've pre-tied a, a short loop. Then to, to carry it in my buoyancy aid, I, I keep it nice and wrapped up, neat and tidy. But to take it apart, all I need to do is just pull one end out and then I can unchain it very quickly into my long cord sling. So because it's a cord, rather than an integral loop, I can use it in a variety of situations. And as you can see, it's, it's massive, so it can go around some significant objects. So if I wanted to go around a big object really easily, I could go all the way around this tree, or maybe a massive tree really quite easily. And as I've got the, the loops pre-tied together, all I need to do is carabiner the loops together. So that's a, a simple way of using the sling. And I'm gonna show you what these loops are for in a little bit more specialist detail in a moment. But here's another reason and another way I like to use a cordage as opposed to a sling. I can take it around multiple objects such as small saplings or small trees. One, two, three anchor points, could be saplings. Take the sling through, or should I say, put the cordage through. Take the cordage through, take the cordage through. Join the two ends together, but if you look at that, that's only pulling on one anchor two anchors and this anchor's got no load on it at all. So if I grab the cordage in the middle, clip in, and grab the cordage here, clip in, what I've got is equalized loads that will then pull in different directions depending on the load that I'm putting on the boat that's trapped in the water. So I've now got one anchor, two anchors, three anchors all brought to a focal point. And I'm just using six meters of Dyneema breaking strain. So the cord itself, as a single strand, it's probably got a 1,400 kilogram breaking strain, 1.4 ton. But multiple anchor points together and sharing the load around things, it's probably gonna be in excess of that. And I'd ask you, when are you gonna pull more than 1.4 tons in a river situation? So there you go, that's a really quick way to use the sling around multiple objects and around big objects. And you saw how quick and easy that was to, to engage. One of the things you need to do as a, a river paddling canoeist is to be able to get yourself out of the water and retrieve your own boat using the swim line. And then unfortunately, sometimes our boats get pinned onto little rocks and little steps, and we're not able to extract the boat purely with our own hands and we end up having to use anchor points on the bank to create mechanical advantage so we can pull the boat out. So let's just take it from the top. I've now got a boat pinned in the water and somehow I've made it to the bank with the, the load bearing swim line. So let's just take it from step one. Here's my boat in the river. 
I have been really proactive and threw up my swim line and swum to the bank. Paying out all the swim line as I go. Now I like to use big swim lines. It gives me more chance of getting to the river. More chance of getting to the river bank. Okie dokie. So I might get to the bank. My boat might be pinned. What I've got to do now is anchor the boat onto, onto an object on the bank. So I'm going to use this lovely tree so we can see things. There's lots of little knots I can use on here to anchor the boat. But my personal favourite will be the Italian friction hitch or I think the Americans call it the Munter hitch. There we go. Pop. It's on. It's now secured. So no matter what happens, the boat is not going to go off downstream because I've anchored my boat with an Italian friction neutral muncher hitch to the tree. Now what I've got to do now is generate pull along this boat, along this line, to pull the boat out of its pin and into the trajectory of the anchor. Now, if I've got a load of strong people, we can give it a heave ho. But sometimes those boats can weigh in excess of 300, 400 kilos and you're never going to do that with your bare hands. So you need to have the ability to put mechanical advantage in with other, other types of equipment. So here's a, here's a really clever way that I like to do it, using, using our natty little bit of clever cordage here. So first thing I'm gonna do is take my carabiner out of my VA, okay? Clip it to my cordage. And this is the big loop. I'm just going to wrap that around probably about five times but the more wraps the more grip okay once I've wrapped it around five times I will then just clip the loop together like so okay and what that's basically done is that's created a Prusik knock type thing. It's actually, I think it's called a clem heist or a crook's clem. It doesn't really matter what it's called. It just grips the rope real strong. So we've got a really good firm grip on the rope. I will then now take another carabiner. Notice how quick I'm taking this out my BA. Clip it through my main anchor point up here and go through the carabiner and then go back down to this carabiner. Happy. I can also move this down the rope if I want to. So if you're now looking at that really carefully, you can see I've got a three to one mechanical advantage. There'll be lots of efficiency losses due to friction, but on paper, we've got a three to one mechanical advantage. So as I pull here, and I can use the knot to hold to, I can put carabiners through the knot to give me a better grip. The point is, whatever I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull as hard as I can, and that creates a three to one mechanical advantage, okay? And the boat is being pulled out, and this slack is being generated. And if I were to let go, chances are that would all go tight again. So what I need to be able to do is to pull mechanical advantage and some help the person takes in on the hitch. Pull, hitch. Pull, hitch. Pull, hitch. And when I've got that as tight as possible, and if I can't get any more mechanical advantage out of it, I can lock it off. Then what I can do is I can disengage the top section and the bottom section and employ what we commonly known in the trade as a vector pull. If I pull sideways, that will magnify the force from this point to both the anchor and the boat. If I put 100 kilos of force on here, a couple of hundred pounds of force, which is a lot for me, I don't think I could pull that, but whatever it is, if I put a one factor in here, you're probably gonna get one and a half to two factors going either direction. So in other words, 
I put force in here, that force is magnified and multiplied onto the boat so I can get more pull on it. So I can vector pull the boat out. And I've done all that using three carabiners and a bit of cordage. So if that looks interesting, and if that looks simple to do, you think, oh, I could do with a bit of cordage. Let me show you how to tie the sneaky little knot so you can do all of the prusset knot tying. So you can get your three to one mechanical advantage. Happy? Give you a shot of that. We're using something called Dyneema, sometimes called Aramid or Kevlar. Really what you need to know is it's incredibly strong cordage, often using bulletproof vests. Um, but there are some drawbacks for it as well as it being quite strong. One of the drawbacks that we need to take into consideration is, is it's incredibly stiff. And because it's stiff, it doesn't kinch on its very, itself very much. Also, the actual cordage inside, underneath the sheath, is very slippy. So it slips around all the time. And because it's stiff and it's slippy, some of the knots we're gonna to use to tie the cordage need to be considered quite carefully. So, in, in my experience, you need to tie the cordage, rather than with things like figure of eights that you can see distorting and doing weird things and moving up the rope. Look at that, distorting, and it will slip through itself. You need to tie with uh, what I know, and maybe people may change, it, change my terminology here, I know it's a, a capuchin or a double capuchin knot. And I've got two knots, one on the end which is just big enough to get a couple of carabiners through and I've got one on the bottom which is exactly the same size as a prusik knot because we're going to use it as a prusik knot. So let's, let's try and show you how to do a capuchin knot as a close-up. So a, a capuchin knot, I know it as a capuchin knot, um, takes a little bit of caution, a little bit of care to tie correctly. So you'll find that I will tie it and then adjust it. So the first thing I do is, is pull enough cordage through to create my uh, prosic knot and then what I'm going to do is to to do a couple of loops one two and then I'm going to take the the end up through the middle of the loops like so and that creates a very neat very tidy knot and as you can see it's got multiple self-trapping winds and of course I've left enough tail sticking out the bottom and, and the way you know you're not leaving enough tail is you leave 10 times the diameter of any rope and that should uh, be enough tail for the right right diameter rope you're moving so now what I've got is a, is a capuchin knot some people might say it looks like a hangman's knot well it looks like one but it doesn't contract like a hangman's knot so that's a, a capuchin knot tied for you so I'm going to do that again slowly so you can see it. Let's do our best to tie a capuchin knot slightly slower for you and more clearly. So the first thing is uh, create enough rope to, to tie your prusik knot with. Or a bite of rope. And then what we're going to do near the ends, we're going to do a couple of wraps. So we're going to go, I tend to wrap round my finger a couple of times. And then what we do you pack that through where your finger was. Boom. There we go. Done. I would then make sure that's tight by putting some serious weight on it, by making sure it's kinched up nice and tight, less chance of the knot moving when you put it under massive load. So it's a capuchin knot. So you do exactly the same on the other end, just do it a little bit smaller.
and there we go two neatly tidy knots onto my bit of cordage that I keep in my bag and my BA and considering the utility and versatility of that that's an incredibly small and effective piece of kit to carry on the river to use in a multitude of situations for anchoring around trees for tying around boats for putting Z rigs in it's just you know the imagination is entirely up to you but what we really have here is a very very strong piece of cordage with two pre-considered loops on the end.